Okay, here's a here's an open set. Now we're still playing against a, a man team. We got four three box. Obviously not ideal to run against. So we got three out there, three on three, but the difference on this clip is you got to see who's playing off. Okay, so right now we have space, we feel it, it's three on two, we'll go ahead and catch it and throw it. And also what we do on the back side here, on our solo side, anytime we got a solo up receiver, he's got uh, a hitch route that the quarterback's looking at first. So right now, for whatever reason he didn't like it, we usually tell him if, if the corner's playing off, you got space. There's no overhang fender, you're going to catch and throw. You go ahead and just catch and throw that hitch. But he liked the bubble, a little better player over on that side, so he went that route. Again, what we're telling our, our number two receiver here is most dangerous man. So right now, he does a great job coming slow off the line of scrimmage to go ahead and block whoever's going to run the ball. So in this case, it's the, the backside safety, the safety who's manned up on number three. Sometimes they switch it out, and number two is running the bubble, and they switch it off. So he does a great job there. Then we're always sending our number one receiver to the corner. Just kind of depends on the look. Just kind of see that there's a lot more space. And I think that's one of the things that we do really well is space to field. Uh, just to maximize one-on-ones. We want as much space for our kids to operate in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Is your back area you throwing the ball here? Yep. So anytime there's a pre-snap, predetermined quarterback will let him know that, hey, I'm throwing it. Okay, otherwise, if he didn't say anything, they'd go ahead and mesh, and then it might be a full throw later. And if you watch our center, he was a guy that was so fast, we had to slow him down. So this was week two on contact. He looked at his feet come together. As the season progressed, we really worked on it, just widen your base. It, it, we always we start with what we say a jumper stance. So if you're gonna jump and go get a rebound, that's that's where your feet should stay in that path the entire time. And if you're just watching them right here, he's falling off because a lot of times it, it, if you are covered, it really you're gonna it's gonna be a solo walk. And listen to Coach uh, from. Uh, Matt Cato State, I, I, I like what he had to say about by the third step he's going to turn. But we were just saying, well, do we want to tell our kids that because you know what will happen. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just always going to turn and then the guy is going to rock inside. So I think that that's something that we'll probably add, but we're going to probably not add that until like maybe our third or fourth week once they know that that's like a last resort I'm going to turn. Because in our outside zone, that's what we, we do. You know, by the third step, you're going to go ahead. If you can't reach him, and, and, and we always talk thick versus thin. We want to be thick on a cover dude when it's inside zone. We want to be thin on an outside zone run. And it, we always work, and we just do the one on and we, we And if we're running outside zone, we'll put the one-on-one. -on -one, we'll, we'll really make that, that guy work. And we always say our first step, we don't ever talk steps. We got back in 1993 when I uh, started with uh, with Al, everything was, you had a lead step, you had a 45 step, you had a bucket step. We just, we got from the University of Arizona, one of our buddies uh, was a GA there, uh, I think it was Sonny Dykes that just would tell the whole line, it's width and depth. Whatever your job is, you just gotta make sure your first step, you're getting enough width and depth that your hat can cover up that play side. I thought, you know what, that's pretty good shit. So, you know, we don't have to have 14,000 different terms. Let's just, hey, if we're running, if, I, if I'm a guard and here's a free technique, if he's tight, my first step, I should now cover him up. My second step is going to go right through his crotch. And then we're going to go ahead and climb and stay on that path. If it's outside zone, now my second step should be covering up his outside foot. So i got to get enough depth and width to get there. So that's all we ever talk about our steps. It's just depth and width. Did I take a sneeze on us? Um, <coughs> so, um, and, and, and for, I think we were talking, Marty Costello, I think he's now in Canadian Football League. He was up at, uh, see it, where was he, Clef? Or was point, he, he was at Steve's point. Um, so when we were talking to him, um, 
Because he looked at our offensive line, he goes, he, he goes, he just taught me through your steps. He goes, I would never do that. And, and we always, and, and I said, well, that's good for you, but we had different kids than you had. So not all of our kids are great at moving. So we always start day one just working first step, second step, and then pound, 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 and we work our, you know, uh, we're gonna, we work a, a, a ton on boards. Uh, but he's like, you guys are very like tall. And, and I said, well, because they come off the ball and they're like flying off the ball watching his, oh. but I'm like, you gotta remember, our, our dudes aren't always that athletic. So we just, we have to give them a frame of reference somewhere to start. And if, if, if you've never been a zone team, you, you can't just go, hey, just go fly off and go get them. I mean, so, because you, you're gonna have guys falling off, just like our center did in the last snap. So we do work a, a ton of, on steps. Do yep. you guys do anything in terms of wrong stepping? If you know you have a double coming, or is it always it, it's it, inside zone right? Your first step is be your right foot. We're, we're always, and that's that's the thing is like our center in, in week two versus one key is going the wrong direction, and, and like, hey, bud, you're, you, you know, we, and we do some pin and pull, and we'll do right. some solo blocks, but our center. 100% of the time is always going to step play side. Always. Now, for the most part, in our base, yes, we're always stepping. We should, if, it, if we're running inside zone left, we should all be taking a step with our left foot. Yep. And then if we have a, if we, if we got a two eye, instead of punching, and, and this came from Steve Graywood too, and, 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 and the stuff works, is our, if, if I'm a, if I got a, if, if I got a two eye, my center's here. And, and I got to work there to the stack backer. We don't punch, we use a flipper. And so it's, the first step is, is a six inch step and our elbows go right here, not never too far back to expose. And then our second step, we're gonna unleash and uncork the hips with a flipper because it maximizes the surface area. When you go ahead and punch, you have a tendency to punch and avoid. And then you got a dude splitting the double team and he's in the lap of your, your quarterback or running back. All right, this one up here, we got four or three, you know, playing cover four and cover three against us. Right now, again, safety's rolled down, got a cover three look. One, uh, three out of two out here on the outside, outside backer is in the box. So easy read for the quarterback, it's gonna be a catch and throw. What we tell our bubble guys is just open. We start, and all our receivers always have inside foot up, so if I'm running bubble, I'm here. I'm just gonna turn open, flat down my third step, I gotta be looking by my third step. And we wanna catch the thing as close to the line of scrimmage as possible. Sometimes, like in this case, this was uh, earlier in the year, our receiver is too deep. You can kinda see how deep our whole line is, and sometimes that happens. They see the whole line off, and they get back off farther than they need to be. Ideally, he should be one yard off the line of scrimmage. Right now, he's like four. And for our receivers, we just want to be, be, be pests. Tell them slow off the line, stock blocking, and just, just get on. We, we don't tell them, hey, we gotta get the thing to the sideline. We just want, go ahead, square them up, Take him where he wants to go. And let the receiver go ahead and go where he needs to. Here's another uh, bubble set. We have now our receivers in the backfield. He's gonna, we call it jump motion. He's gonna motion, give us the same look. And it's earlier against that same team that was playing come one against us and wasn't allowing us to throw bubbles. So we go ahead and put it in the backfield. He goes ahead and get motion. Now we got a chance to throw a bubble because they don't have three for three at the line of scrimmage. Gives us a chance to get our playmaker the ball. We go ahead and just run. Again, same thing for quarterback. This is all he's reading, the same thing we did pre snap on the other snaps. He's just looking at the three and two. No one's running out there to guard him, so that's easy for him. Go ahead and catch it and throw it. And the back knows too at this point. Hey, no one's running with them. I know I'm not getting the ball. We work this again, same with that key drill. Work all our RPOs, just go ahead all the scenarios that can happen. No one's running, the back knows he's not getting it. If someone runs, if that backer flies out, say this inside backer flies out for whatever reason, or the safety drops down, he knows right now we're going to go ahead and run the football. This 
guys are on and get I mean all we're looking for anytime we're throwing these is five yards. Here's a case where we got the odd front, so the zeros and no's. We're actually cutting off the backside knee end. And just based on the count. Because <clears throat> there is no outside backer out there. <clears throat> 